Hey everybody and welcome back to Split Couch Games. I'm Scott. And I'm Ben. And this is Couchcast number 56. We are both struggling a little bit mentally, so this will be an interesting podcast. Hey, it, whatever, no. Ben cooked himself some scrambled no. eggs in like 30 seconds <laughs> this morning. <laughs> it was one of the most <clears throat> impressive things I've seen. Yeah, apparently when you preheat the skillet, on high and then throw <laughs> butter on there so that it starts burning and then just pour the eggs on right away it'll like cook the eggs super super fast and leave the skillet spotless <laughs> so uh pro tip out there you know. for you guys if you guys are in a hurry <laughs> yeah if you're in a hurry there's oh, your God. like 30 second scrambled eggs oh man <clears throat> it's pretty funny anyway um we got a uh, we got a couple different topics. It's gonna be a little bit of a chill podcast. We're not gonna be rushing to get everything done. Should just sort of meander through everything. Probably <laughs> go off topic every once in a while, as we are known to do. What? But uh, no. you know, we gotta we gotta talk about EA and Battlefront yeah. too, because yeah, because th- there's there's been a lot that has changed <laughs> since. We last recorded anything yeah. on this. Um, so if you watched the last episode, you saw that we basically we recorded like right before the whole uh, Reddit, Reddit thing. Red, yeah, the Reddit most downvoted post in history where they're like, deal with it. Because <laughs> this they, is what where, we where they were like, we, we wanted players to have a sense of like pride and accomplishment or something for unlocking a character. Yeah. And it's like, so, so you, you're telling me that after like, 40 hours mm-hmm. and you unlock one character and keep in mind that, that i think that's like 40 hours and like that's all you unlock right yeah Cause... like that that would literally be you save every credit yeah for that unlock yeah yeah so th- we, but you we feel recorded... really accomplished <laughs> <laughs> yeah we, we recorded last week's podcast <laughs> before all of that happened um and that that was obviously I, I still personally can't believe that they said that. Um, yeah. It, it, it's just shocking to me. I that... mean, so I, I understand the mindset of like, hey, we want people to, you know, build towards stuff so that when they get it, it feels like, hey, you know, I earned this. Yeah, I totally. get that. That doesn't work if there's a microtransaction to fix that. Because, like, it well, comes it, across as, like, hey, just go do this. It's easier. It's better. It's faster. Not only that, but I, I, I feel like asking someone to dump 40 hours into a game and, like, to just get one single unlock. Yeah, that is also true. I, I, I think that, no matter what the unlock is, is a little bit outlandish. Yeah. Anyway, um, basically, I think all the... All the outrage has pretty much been uh, expressed by the yeah. internet community. Yeah. Um, we, we can't really add much to yeah. that so aspect of things. We're not going to beat EA too much harder. But uh, So they came out, they changed the rate of unlocks, or the cost of the hero characters, I believe. I forget, Like I think they like halved it, I think. But I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, no, it was more than that. They, I, I believe they reduced the cost of the characters by 75% on average. So how much do you want to bet that that's what they wanted it to be in the first place? But they were like, ah, we could probably get away with 40. I don't know. Probably. And then they were um, like, oops, we couldn't. So let's go back to the original design. I don't know. Not only that, but e- even if it wasn't that way, I can almost guarantee you that like there there had to have been at some point something that made that less of a grind like you know mm-hmm. maybe the the values were the same but the amount of credits you earned per game used to be higher or yeah. something like that yeah um but yeah so i mean they, they did that and then people were still kind of like yeah but your game is still pay to win mm-hmm. and it, not that I know the guy or anything, but, you know, kind of a, a plug for uh, level cap gaming. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. 
he he's uh, a YouTuber known for his coverage on like the uh, Battlefield series uh, as well PUBG. as Battlefront and PUBG um, and pub yeah and PUBG um, it pre- pretty much like any like competitive shooter that is large scale on the PC platform. Uh, he he will yeah 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 he, he he's a part of that. Um, you know he goes to all the events and everything, um, and he got into like the early access part or whatever through uh the ea access or something um and Mm -hmm. then he spent a hundred dollars on microtransactions and then basically reviewed the game um and the gameplay footage of him in multiplayer was just absolutely atrocious and when i say that i mean like how quickly he was killing everyone mm-hmm. and how much better he was without like having the obvious like you know yeah. hand eye skill there was just disgusting like he he was just like melting people and then when he would get shot at like he would get hurt yes <laughs> but the amount of damage he would take in comparison to how much damage he was dealing typically mm-hmm. was just ridiculous yeah um because i think uh one clip specifically was um you know he was flying around in the starfighter battle mode or whatever Mm -hmm. um and he had an a-wing which is an, an interceptor class so it already has a high rate of fire and low health but he has extra damage and higher rate of fire on his interceptor <laughs> and then i think his third star card was like faster healing or something mm-hmm. so he he basically would just be kind of like he'd be like you know kill 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 and i like you i just it uh yeah I don't know. I, Which, if you want to know what I'm talking about, like go go look up Level Cap Gaming. Um, and the title of the video I think was uh, "I Paid to Win Battlefront yeah. 2 Review" or something, something like, that. like that. Uh, if I remember, I will link it in the description. Yeah, um, yeah. but j- w- watch that video. Um, the last half of it is talking about campaign and does have a few spoilers. So if you care about that maybe stop watching after he's done talking about multiplayer, but whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was like the next outrage was just simply that people were like, oh my God, you know, you can still mm-hmm. literally like in day one, pay a bunch of money. And then by day two, you are a God. Yep. It's not even and... day two. It's like after like 30 seconds, it's like, boop. God well, mode. well, because I mean, you have to like get to level twenty in order to craft the highest yeah, tier right. of cards. That's fine. That's fair. And he he said that it took him about like nine hours or something like that. So, sure. okay, um, a weekend in a weekend yeah. of moderate gaming, you're a god. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, you're the greatest. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so uh, people were still pretty upset about that, and then uh, seemingly. Out of the blue, uh, EA uh, slash Dice basically came out and they were like, you know, based off of fan feedback, we're going to disable the microtransactions for uh, now. Like, fan feedback is, is very subtle. It's, like, it's very, like, calm and, like, <laughs> measured. Like, yeah, you know, some people uh, express some displeasure with the, the way yeah. that we do things. You know, not not the industrial-wide boycott that we're facing, or in- industry-wide boycott, yeah. but, yeah. Um, and w- when I first saw that, uh, my initial reaction was like, damn, like, we actually did something. Mm-hmm. Um, and th- my second thought was, I might actually consider picking up the game now. And my third thought was, that's probably exactly what they want, though, mm-hmm. so that they can get all the day one sales and then turn around and turn them back on without changing much. But that's the super cynical way of looking at it. I think it's going to be somewhere in the middle. Yeah. I think like I wouldn't be surprised if... Because it came out, what, yesterday, officially? um, And everything prior to that was early access? Because yesterday was... Friday uh, yesterday? Yeah, Friday yesterday, because this is Saturday. Or did it come out on Tuesday? No, I, I think it came out Friday the 17th. 
because I, I don't know if you've noticed, probably not because you don't play much besides Gears. Hey, um, whoa, but calm down. <laughs> uh, vid- video games have actually shifted their release date to Friday a lot recently. Yeah. Like a lot of video games are releasing on Fridays now, which I've always never understood the Tuesday thing because it's like there's a lot of people that aren't going to start playing until the weekend. I so... think it was... Um, I... This is one of those tangents and going off topic that we were talking about. I think it started because movies dominated Fridays. It was like, oh, you know, new movie comes out, opens Friday. Everyone was going to want to go see that. Like, so like there's a Uh, bit. So I think it was just like, it was kind of like, it was understood that Friday was Friday was uh, uh, movie day, (laughs) Sundays, football day. And then Tuesday was just kind of like, hey, video games. That might be it. I don't know. But I, I, I had to assume I, that's I always, part of it. I don't know. Well, I always assumed it was because they decided to follow the industry standard for other popular media release in physical form. Because mm. even to this day, for the most part, if a movie is coming out on DVD or if a CD is being released by a musical artist, then they are released on Tuesdays. Hmm. Taylor Swift I, album. I pro- Taylor Swift album just came out on Friday. Well, yeah. I don't know. I, I but it, uh, again, that's like part of the sh- yeah. weird shift. Yeah, so. I think. And movies now, are like they're coming out on like Wednesday night. I don't know. It's so. Yeah, it's like I said, weird madness. shift. Um, but it it used to be Tuesdays. Okay. Um, and I know that because like growing up, you know, in high school and everything, I mm. I knew a lot of people that worked at Best Buy, and then yeah. you know, Marcy also uh, would buy a lot of CDs when she was younger so like okay. you know she would go out on tuesdays and buy cds Interesting. so yeah but yeah um but no so i mean that was my my train of thought when i saw that and when i went through that train of thought i, I realized that like the, the the final thought was super cynical my hope Mm-hmm. is that by the time it, like let's say new year's rolls around that they have made some substantial patches to the way their entire economy works yeah and now if we're talking like dream levels of what i am hoping will happen mm-hmm I'm hoping that they will realize that some of the cards are ridiculously overpowered and either replace them outright Mm -hmm. with an entirely different thing or tone it down so that the difference and or benefit is very minimal. You know, so that like the top tier of damage boost is only like 10%. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's still kind of shitty to have, like, that Super shitty, unknown actually. of... Well, I, yeah, I mean, it, it's still, you know, shitty of having that unknown of, like, is this guy only better than me because he's dealing more damage? Mm-hmm. But a, a 10% damage differential, I feel like, is something that can be overcome just simply with skill. I, Whereas, I would agree with that, but the movement in... Battlefront seems very like it was a little more stagnant. Like you can really only like strafe back and forth. Um, maybe like and like there doesn't yeah. seem and like the maps from what I've seen seem pretty linear. Like maybe you might be able to like sneak through a hallway here or there and come in behind. But at that point, if you're coming in behind someone, like even like a fifty percent damage reduction won't keep them alive, presumably. Yeah. Unless they're like super like twitchy. Like maybe on PC it's different, but like on console. That would be enough, I would assume. Yeah. But, and I mean... Yeah, it's just... What? it's shouldn't be a thing. And what I've said from the get-go, from when I first heard about the system, is that like each card needs to have a benefit and a negative to it yeah. to balance it out. And that's really the only way. Yeah. So if you, you know, choose like to do you more damage... You deal more damage, but you also take more damage yeah. or something. And I think that that's... It forces interesting choices. Like, you're like, okay, well, what do I want? Do I want to be a tanky character that does a little damage, or do I want to be a glass cannon? Like, I think that, like, yeah, that needs to be in there, because then I don't care, like, what anyone spends their money on. They're going to have a weakness to exploit. Yeah. yeah. And 
I, I definitely agree with you there. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's why I was saying, like, at least. Yeah. No, I, 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 got I you. think they need to tone down the values on some of the cards. Yeah. Because, you know, like, a, a, a 10% damage resistance or, you know, damage buff or something is far more manageable yeah. from a I don't have that standpoint than what, like, 40% is. Yeah. No, I, f- so. I, I get it. I don't know. I just, I hate that system so much. So do I. <sighs> like, it's, it, it's so... beyond awful. And it, I don't know. Like, I, I was really, really hoping. And I, I, I don't own the game. And I may in the future. I may not. It, it just kind of depends at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, but if the uh, Trade Federation Army at you know, on any map, does not have the Droidicas, I will be severely disappointed. Yeah, I feel that. Because that is like that. That was one of my favorite units to play around with in yeah. Battlefront Two, the original. But Ben, those might be overpowered, and EA doesn't stand for overpowered things. In I, I, I mean, <laughs> I like it was a yeah. joke. Anyway. <laughs> Um, but they were so fun. You got to roll around, and it was know, just I know. entertaining. I know. Um, do we do we have anything else to say? Because that could be a good transition into the next topic. I, I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, oh, I guess I should. Give I, I, I'm thoughts. nervous for the future. Yeah. Th- those are my final thoughts about it. Really. So I would assume that there's going to be a middle ground somewhere in here. Like uh, microtransactions are going to come back. Um, totally. But I think that EA and DICE are taking, like, a serious look at it because, obviously, you know, the shit blew up. And they want to make sure, like, if they, when they come out, I think that just from a business perspective, they realize that it needs to be fair at the very least. Like, yeah, I think that, like, the fact that they've taken them out shows that they're, they understand that they fucked up. It's just. They have like what remains to be seen is like to what extent do they realize that? Yeah. Um. But anyway, you were referring to the original Battlefront two, I believe. Maybe Battlefront one as well. I don't know that one as well. Yeah. I, the, the the difference between those in my memory banks are very non-existent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so anyway, um, so. Uh, Viper, a long time ago, asked us to talk about things that we've missed from past uh, past generations g- generations of consoles and games and stuff. And Ben and I, we kind of discussed it, and we were like, uh, we don't really have a, enough to do a full episode, and that we would kind of tack it on to an episode in the future when we had time. And then Viper reminded us on the last podcast that we hadn't done that, so here it is. Okay. Here we are. Um Stuff from previous generations that we that we miss or want to see come back in some yeah. fashion I, or another. So I'll start off. Um, I miss achievements that matter or like that kind of. My favorite achievements were always like challenge achievements, where like uh, like the most notable is the Mile High Club in Call of Duty Four, where it's like beat the beat the f- pro or the epilogue on veteran in under a minute which i tried to get that for so long and i can't remember if i actually did it or not i i gave it a a few goes like i never like sat down for like hours on a time to do it but like every once in a while i'd be like okay i have nothing to do or i'm waiting for a friend to get on so i go and attempt it but i never got it yeah it was fucking hard and like the people who had it you're like damn good for you and like yeah i i really want to find out whether or not i have that now i'm, <laughs> I'm scrolling through all my yeah um all my achievements god xbox one has been out forever yeah uh but yeah like now pretty much every achievement is like level up beat this yeah, level in like the campaign you, yeah and it's like there's no it's like there's no like well, I, I think the main reason for that is just simply because you had a lot of people or a lot of games and or game companies that their achievements would be there, but for the most part, they were unattainable. 
Um, mm. You know, I mean, it, like, they would maybe have, like, one or two that were essentially beat the campaign, and mm. then the rest were these, like, absolutely just ridiculous challenges. Yeah, and Gears it, is a responsible for some of that. Yeah. For sure. Uh, um, uh, and I feel like... <laughs> What's happened is, like, we kind of went from, like, one end of the spectrum to the other. Yeah. Did you say it was Modern Warfare 1 or 2? It's Modern Warfare 1. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm getting closer. Yeah. He's um, getting there. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm all the way back to Dead Space 1 and Fallout 3, so... No, you still have a ways to go. <laughs> oh, God, it won't let me go back any farther. Fuck! Oh, no! <laughs> Maybe I've played it more recently. Oh, wait, no, there it is. Ha, found it. He's done okay. it. Let's see. Did I, did I get the Mile High Club? I don't think I did, but I, I, I know I tried for a while. Um, cause I, I feel like I got really close. Yeah. Nope, I did not. I don't know. Yeah. Wait. Uh, you're thinking of a different achievement, I think. Because this no. says Mile High Club is skydive to safety on veteran difficulty. Yeah, that's that's the that's the thing. At the end, like you jump out of the plane. Oh, okay. Yeah, but is it that you only have a minute to do it? Yeah, like that's part oh. of the level. Like, okay, it is technically beat the level, but it's a really fucking hard level. <laughs> um, huh. that that's got to be like one of the first Call of Duty games that I didn't beat on veteran. No, you because because the epilogue doesn't count as the veteran well yeah but i don't have like any of the other oh, ones really? that beat it on veteran yeah oh. I, I must have just not fucking cared it's either that or like i was like i'll go you know i because it was also i think probably the first call of duty game i played mm. um that was a good I, campaign though yeah so i i think i played it and i was like i'll do hardened because i don't know mm -hmm. and then i realized it was a total cakewalk and i planned on going back and then just never did yeah because i think i did modern warfare 2 anyways we're like yeah way off we're topic super now. off topic but anyway i i personally i always enjoyed the achievements that kind of like made you pl like you play through normally you get a couple achievements that like everyone gets and you're like ah cool but then there are achievements that like forced you to like play differently mm -hmm. for a section like in like one of my favorite ones in uh uh gears one was cluster truck which was mm -hmm. 10 times get three or kill three people or three enemies with one grenade. So like, you kind of like had to find out where like you could find like three, three dudes bunged up and throw a nade at them and get the kill. Like, it was just kind of like a fun little achievement. It wasn't like hard yeah. or anything. Um, and then it kind of just like adds a little replay value and like, but now like achievement score isn't like prominently displayed anywhere <laughs> really like it's on the profile yeah. but like it's not i don't know it, it it's less of a big deal than what it used to be yeah. and i i think part of that's because microsoft when they released the 360 and everything like that was something that they pushed heavily was like mm -hmm. you know it's like hey you know we have achievements so like you can essentially brag about it like, they even had, um, for people who got high enough gamer scores, you could, like, join this, like, gamer, oh, gamer yeah, yeah. score club or whatever, and they would, like, send you a card with your gamer tag printed on it, and you could get, like, discounts at restaurants or some shit. Yeah. Um, I, I got one, never used it, because I was like, how the fuck are they even gonna know? Like... <laughs> It, nobody like i'm not gonna just be like i'm part of the gamer score club or whatever and then fucking like my waitress at applebee's is gonna be like cool dude i just um, i just imagine you like you look her like the waitress in the eye and you like slide it across the table right. give a little <laughs> wink and then just like turn away and then like <laughs> waitress yeah just walks away. oh my god yeah um, um yeah i don't know I mean, I, I, I agree. Um, and I, I feel like there are some games that are still kind of striking that nice balance. Mm. Um, because I could be wrong, but I think Doom has some that are, like, pretty tough. But then they also have, like, the majority of them that are easier. Yeah. Um, 
And I always, I mean, heck, even Overwatch has some that are like really, really hard to get. So yeah, I I, I can understand <clears throat> where you're coming from, but I feel like it's not quite as bad as what I I, I think it's just mostly like there's not enough attention drawn to them to make it like yeah. worth caring about. Like I. The only time I've ever actually looked at the list of achievements for Gears of War with like four was mm-hmm. at the beginning to trying to get like a clue of what the game like how the game was gonna play. Like Yeah. What's 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 going on? Like after that, like I haven't even looked. Like I know I think I'm close to an achievement because there's an achievement tracker whenever I launch the game. It's like you're like the next closest achievement is this. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. I think yeah. it's a horde related achievement. I'm not playing that. Um but yeah, anyway. Yeah, I- I stopped looking at achievement lists um, because of, like, story spoilers and stuff at one point. So, like, uh, I, I typically try to avoid looking at them. Most uh, um, most of the lists that I, I've i seen have, like, the, or, like, are listed under, like, secret achievements or they're, like, just, oh, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, mission now they are. 15. Y- yeah. Yeah. N- now they're pretty spoiler-free, but... For a while during the 360, I, I don't remember what game it was, but like there's an achievement for, you know, like kill this guy during the final mission, and like for half the fucking game, that dude's on your side. So it was like, what oh, the fuck? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but so as far as things that I miss, um, you know, during the or, you know, from last gen and everything, Mm -hmm. um, it it would definitely have to be certain games, um, uh, specifically, um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus on one set that I'll talk about at the end, but specifically, I really miss, uh, good Splinter Cell games that are not, like, some weird stealth action hybrid Mm -hmm. um like i i want to go back to the like you have to kind of sit in the dark like memorize patrol patterns that kind of thing like Mm -hmm. utilize your gadgets your sticky cams all that kind of crap and get rid of this like oh well if you mark the guys and you have the special thing then you can just go (laughs) and kill like fucking five dudes in two seconds (laughs) <laughs> like we need to get rid of that shit and go back to an actual stealth game. And the last Splinter Cell game that came out was really good because like it it kind of had both as an mm-hmm. option, but you could still tell that the game was built around having stealth as not an option. Mm-hmm. And that was annoying. Yeah. Um and another game franchise that I want to see come back and be, like, true to form and not its most recent installment is the Ninja Gaiden series. Um, yeah. Which I've been really tempted to drop $10 on Ninja Gaiden Black in Back Compat Store. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, I really, really like those games. They were super fun. The first two, at yeah, least. Yeah, the yeah. third one, the third one was still fun, but it was the definition of easy mode. Mm-hmm. And I personally hate to criticize the third one, just simply because it technically the developer achieved what they set out to achieve. Yeah, which was to create a more widely appealing and story related game. But it's not what you wanted. It's not what anybody wanted. That's yeah. why the game flopped. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so Splinter Cell and Ninja Gaiden, and then just a fucking good Star Wars game that isn't Battlefield or <laughs> Battlefront. Yeah. Because Battlefront's good and all. Like, the, it, it, it helps, like, this much, which is a very small amount for those who can't see me. Apparently, the campaign um, is decent, though. See, but I don't care. Yeah. I don't. I, know, I don't I want. I, I I don't want a fucking stormtrooper campaign. I want my Jedi Knight <laughs> campaign. I want like an RPG, something like. I want to be able to like pick pick up a guy with force choke, carry him over to a ledge, and drop him. Or you know, I want to be able to like throw my fucking lightsaber and cut some dude in half. Like I don't. I don't want a first person shooter Star Wars. 
which well, I know not with that's that like, attitude. <laughs> I know. Well, I know. see, but I mean, I know, like, I know, that's, I know. that's the beauty of the Jedi Knight franchise. Yeah. Is you played I- effectively a gray Jedi yeah. or something. Um, yeah. And so he was okay with, like, using guns and shooting people and everything. Or you could use a lightsaber. Like, it was pretty much up to you. Kill so, your way. <laughs> um, it, exactly. Like, you could yeah. use force powers, you could use guns, you could use a lightsaber. Like, it, it was pretty much just kind of like, hey, you know, you do whatever you want to do. No, I feel like I, do want, I also want a good Star Wars game. I just want good yeah. Star Wars stuff. <laughs> so, f- yeah. Soon? <laughs> maybe? Yeah. Bioware, maybe. please? Uh, um, it, it, not even Bioware. Like, it doesn't have to be I Bioware. Know. Just, like, anyway. literally someone make something that is a good Star Wars game that is not a fucking first-person shooter. Well, unfortunately, EA solely. owns the rights to Star Wars video games. Yeah, and they need to not. Yeah. Well, they it's do. either that or they, they need to partner up with some studios that are not under their umbrella. So, but speaking of Knights of the Old Republic and, like, the Old Republic, um, the director for Last Jedi... Ryan Johnson, Rian Johnson. I uh-huh. don't know if you pronounce it differently, but um, he is getting, or allegedly, I, I'm not sure if this has been confirmed by anyone, but he's getting his own trilogy that will have nothing to do with like the Skywalker storyline. And people are hoping that we get like a Darth Revan storyline. And I'm, I would be okay with I'm that. I'm all about that. I'm 100% yeah. all about that. But anyway, um, especially if it means like we actually get to see like the real dark side of the force and not like just this pithy emo kid side of the dark side we okay yeah okay i i i want the dark side to mean more than just like be angry you know yeah okay i mean i i I mean yeah okay (laughs) We're, we're i see what you're saying i would like to see different kinds of sith in the movies i can agree with that I don't necessarily yes. mind what we have. Um, I, I don't mind it either. I just want it to be wider than that. Like, yeah, I, 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 I want you. it to actually mean something. I Anyways, you. you were saying. Um, so I, I finished this up with two things that I freaking miss. <laughs> One, Damn it. split screen. Like, in just like yeah. a standard split screen that like runs well. This is a problem one because Halo Five does not have split screen, and I just did the Machinima video without it, and boy was that a bitch! <laughs> Fucking sucked. <laughs> Two. Running Gears of War on split screen, Gears of War Four, is absolute ass. It is so bad. Like, you, all right, good to know. Like instead of like running like the two screens at like 30 frames a second it runs both screens at like 10 frames a second and it's just so bad yeah like it's i can't even control my character when i play split screen gears yeah um i was about to say uh you know kind of going back to the star wars thing that ea should work with raven software um because they were the last ones to do jedi knight games and i feel like that they would be a solid candidate to do another one, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're they're owned by Activision, so I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Unless, Unless EA Disney and Ubisoft, goes like... Or Activision. Activision, you said? Yeah, Activision. Right. Uh, unless they come together, kind of like Sony and Marvel did for Spider-Man Homecoming, and they're like, hey... Or they just purchase Raven. I don't know. There's there's options. It could happen. See, I, I think the real option is Disney needs to go like, you know, maybe handing the video game rights to one publisher was a mistake. And then they say, uh, fuck you, EA. And then kind of like sprinkle it out amongst the entire industry so that they can actually get some variance and quality yeah. out of the content. But nah. that's just my opinion. Nah, man. EA all it day. still confuses me like when i heard that that's what disney did i was like well we're never getting a good star wars game well i mean i think it's because battlefront 
the old Repu- well, like I, the old Republic series, like the well, main, yeah, the major I, I games. I guarantee you, they they, like, they looked at, they well. were like, you know, well, Dice does Battlefield, um, which is very similar to Battlefront, so they could probably do that. And then you know, EA has Bioware, so why don't we give you all of it? Yeah, so that you can just make the good. And then I'm like, but no, like <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> You're making a terrible mistake. I have a bad feeling about this. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Also, I want Rogue Squadron. I want that game to come back. Just saying. Yeah. That was a great That was game. fun. That was, that was so fun. Um, I think that was also Activision related, wasn't it? I think so. But anyway. Um, the other thing, and this is pretty much specifically for Xbox. I'm getting real, like... The each update that they make they do for the Xbox One UI is a little bit better, but uh-huh. it still takes so many goddamn scrolling and clicks to get to friends and like invite them to a damn party. Really? How the hell are you doing it? I I go home button or the the jewel. Scroll over okay. to the friends list and then scroll down. Okay. I want, like, but in, like, I know that it's, like, not worse than what was with the 360, where it was, like, do the same thing, scroll down, click friends, scroll through the friends list. I want a better way to do it. Like, I just, I I do. (laughs) Like, there has to be a better way. Like, I, I basically, like, I want them to do like this customizing thing where you can like add like as many pins you want. You can like reorganize your home a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I want that to just, you be able to put your friends on there. Like, you know, the, the few friends that you normally do, like maybe they're on the front page. Maybe you can like pin a friend. That would be cool. Whatever the case may be. Like, I just want like, cause yeah. Cause I, I kind of see where you're saying now. Um, cause now that I think about it, it, the friends menu within the Xbox Jewel pop out menu thing mm-hmm. is it, it, like you have to go like left two or something and then down. Yeah. But like it's not down and like you're immediately in your friends mm-hmm. list. Like you have to go down to friends as opposed to like down to groups or yeah. party. Mm-hmm. And then you go into friends and then. Um you scroll through a separate list in there. So I, 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 yeah. I do agree with you. We should be able to like pin a friend or something like that. Yeah. Like, or like, or even just like organize the pop, like the pop in screen to like, say like default to the friends list. Yeah. Or something like that. Something. Yeah. That's, that's really the thing that bugs me the most. Like it's just, it, it's, it's, it's not bad, but it's not great, and like I want yeah. it to be great. Yeah. Anyway, we're coming up I on agree. forty minutes. Yeah, we're we're, we're you know ten minutes over. I mean, what we normally do. No so one's gonna complain should... about that. Nah. Yeah. Viper, don't do it. <laughs> no, I think Viper. <laughs> Viper enjoys. It. I think Viper wants us to go for like an hour and a half. Yeah, oh, probably. Like, God no. Uh, I, I was just, you know, because you were saying nobody will complain about that. Uh, and I was just, I, I was seeing him going like, I'll complain about it. <laughs> and I'm going to throw out, Steven, don't complain about it. I know you're going to. <laughs> Steven. <laughs> Steven, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I, I don't know who you are, but don't complain about it. <laughs> our two viewers. Yay. We've doubled I our mean... viewers in the past couple of weeks. <laughs> Our regular viewers. Double our regular viewers. Our, our regular viewers that comment. We should we should be specific about that because I feel like we have a handful of subs that do come back every week. They just don't say anything. True. So Okay. I'll believe that. Shout out to you yeah. guys that don't talk to us. We still love you. Thank you for giving us views and making us feel okay about ourselves. <laughs> um, All right. Yeah. We got to wrap this up because... <laughs> I I got I got shit to do. All right. So I will uh I was going to say I'll talk to you later. 
that's not how we sign off here on Split Catch Games. Uh, no, it is not. Um, but we will talk to you guys later, or talk at you later, rather. Yeah. Um, next time on Split Couch Games. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>